What's going on guys? Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. And today I'm looking at four different areas of Caruso's tennis game that he can improve in to help him continue to climb up the ATP Tour rankings. If you want to see some point analysis of his game and see where he can make some improvements, stay tuned. It's coming up next. So let's jump into a point here from the Acapulco challenger that he played a few weeks ago. Played a guy here, I believe about 242 in the world, Oliveira on the far side, and Cruz here on the near side. And let's just kind of have this point go through once in real time. And then after it goes one time in real time, we'll break it down. So serve from Oliveira wide, crew with the return cross, can hit a little battle here. Oliveira gets aggressive. And then Carew on the run ends up spraying that backhand just long. So let's go ahead. Let's break this one down here real quick. We're going to break down a ton of points. So if you're into this type of thing, stay tuned because we're really going to dive in to where Carew can improve and break these points down. Also, if you see anything that I missed or you feel like you could add some things, feel free to do that in the comment section below. It's very useful, very helpful for everybody. So again, Oliveira serving far side right here. Lefty, a little tricky to play lefties. Crew commented that on this day, and you could see in the match play footage that it was really windy and breezy outside, so that made conditions a little bit tough. Uh, especially if you're a flatter hitter, crew tends to hit a little bit flatter than some of the other guys you know, that he's playing against. That can make conditions a little bit tough depending on how that wind is moving or swirling in a stadium situation like this. So Oliver again, here, lefty slice serve. Doesn't hit it particularly close to the sideline, right? That ball actually isn't too close to the sideline where it lands. So crew sets up. He's in an open stance, and he loves his backhand, right? That's a big strength for him. So he goes to hit the backhand return, ends up getting off the court a little bit here, handling that lefty slice, and then gets it cross. But it's still kind of in the middle third of the court here, right to Oliveira's forehand. Oliveira's loading up, semi-open stance, loading on that left leg there, leg close to the ball, and getting ready here to hit a good shot. And he just goes kind of deep and heavy to Carew's forehands. If we go back for a second, Crew is inside the court to receive the second serve, which is pretty typical for a lot of returners on tour. A lot of guys will actually take second serves from inside the baseline in what's known as zone three there, so inside the baseline. But that also means that if your opponent hits the ball, the next ball, deep, right, is able to hit that next ball deep, you're going to have to come from this inside position and potentially back up to get the next ball. And that's exactly what happens. Crew basically follows that line right there. And then he has to give up a little position from the baseline to receive this ball on the forehand side. And he doesn't do a great job with it because this ball lands short here in what is known as zone two. And zone two basically means Oliveira is not going to have to back up. He's going to be able to stay in this position right here and get aggressive with his court position. He's going to be able to be close to the baseline and probably get aggressive with the shot. He goes around to hit the forehand and gets pretty darn aggressive. Windy conditions or not, he hits an aggressive forehand that is shorter in the court right here, right? So we can see that ball landing right there, shorter, but it's close to the sideline and it's hit with a lot of pace. And he's trying to take Kuru off the court with the shorter aggressive angle, right? So he does that and gets Kuru on the dead run. Kuru does a pretty good job of dropping his hips down here and then ends up hitting middle third short again. So this ball, again, is not going to back Oliveira up. Oliveira can maintain a position closer to the baseline. Since Carew is off the court over here, outside the alley, essentially, or pretty close to it from that previous angle, Oliveira really has this entire chunk of court open right here to get aggressive in. And let's see what happens here. He blisters the forehand, right? Gets decent depth on it. Right around here is where it landed, and Crew's having to run from one side of the court to the other, and Crew ends up missing just long there. So really one of Crew's biggest weaknesses, I think the thing that stands out most about his game is his lack of sheer speed. And I'm not saying he's slow, but at this level, when guys are hitting very heavy and very aggressive and moving you from side to side with certain shots, it can be very easy, right? to not be able to get the balls or not hit a great quality ball when you're on the run. So here, again, Oliveira hits the first shot inside out, hits a nice angle, and Caruso survives this first ball, right? So what I mean by he survives it is he gets it in. The problem with it is there's not significant spin, speed, or depth on it to back Oliveira off an aggressive position. So Oliveira maintains an aggressive position because Caruso on the run here, right, 
didn't produce a good enough ball to back Oliveira up. And because that ball wasn't great, Carew now has to run from this side all the way over to this side. So Oliveira does that. He doesn't even hit close to the sideline. This ball is probably five feet or four feet inside the single sideline. But he hits heavy, hits with some pace, drives through the court, and then Crew on the dead run, hitting from the open stance backhand here, right? Almost makes the shot, but he's not good enough to survive multiple damaging or punishing shots. You want to be in a position where you can survive four or even five big shots, right? That's what we see from the best movers in the world. Crew has put a lot of time into his fitness and getting better in that area, but he still needs to improve in his movement. Let's look at the next point now. All right, so before we break this one down, guys, let's let this play once in real time. Oliver serving near side T serve. Crew with the backhand return, short middle. Oliver punishes it, and then Crew makes the air right there. So let's go back for a second here and take a look at this thing, break it down a little bit. But again, we're still in the movement mode of analyzing Crew's movement and where he can get better with his footwork and ability to defend. So Oliver again, lefty right here serving, and he goes down the T. It's a pretty well-placed serve. You know, it's not directly on the center line, right? So it's not lined up right there. It's maybe a foot away from the center line, but it's good enough as a lefty to position Carew a little bit and get Carew in a position where he's hitting a high return and he receives it and ends up hitting this ball with decent depth, enough to back Oliveira up a little bit. If we go back for a second, Oliveira was inside the baseline. He backs him up just a little bit, but it's not the type of ball that's really pushing Oliveira far behind the baseline. And because it's not really pushing Oliveira far behind the baseline, pushing him back more, Oliveira feels like, hey, this ball's not hit heavy or with a lot of speed or deep enough to push me back, I can get aggressive here, right, to the open court, go back behind Carew, inside out with the forehand, and that's what he does. He spanks it again. And you'll notice Oliveira does a really good job, too. I've talked about this with uh, Sinner a little bit. But Oliveira does a good job of not always hitting every single ball deep, especially I think he knows Carew's strength is not his movement. So he hits this punishing ball angled off a little bit more, not as deep in the court, but angled off to try to get Carew further off the court to try to force the air. Obviously, depth is good, and Oliveira uses that as well. But he does a good job of sprinkling in aggressive angles like this to try to force air. So Crew goes to hit this ball. And then suddenly, right, we can see Crew is lunging at this ball out of nowhere. Kind of loses his balance. Maybe it was the wind. Maybe it was the trajectory of the shot. I'm not sure what caused the problem. But you can see he's suddenly lunging at the ball. And now that's enough to force the air in these conditions. But again, he's got to be able to go especially from the middle of the court against an aggressive player like this or a guy who can get aggressive on the right balls, he's got to be able to explode to these balls and still be athletic enough and quick enough to be in this type of a position where he's still making this ball and making Oliveira play another ball. And you start there with, hey, I'm going to make you play another ball. And then the next step after I'm going to make you play a ball is, is my ball good and deep or heavy or enough to keep you from attacking on the next shot? Let's go to the next point now. Before we break it down, let's let this play once in real time. Crew returning on the near side. Oliveira serving on the far side. Wide serve. Short forehand again. Crew a little defense. Oliveira then on the run. Crew on the run. And there's that backhand air on the run, right? All right, so we have an interesting point here, right? We've got Oliveira taking the big serve, takes this one, hits this one pretty flat, right? Fairly close to the sideline on this, maybe six inches away from the sideline, hits it pretty flat. He had spun a lot of serves in at this point and then hits the flat one here early in the second set. Maybe he's up a set and he's feeling confident, like I can go for a little bit more. I have the advantage here. I'm up a set against this guy and I felt out his game. So I'm going to go for a few bigger serves here and there. So he goes for the big one, gets Carew on the stretch, I'm not a huge fan of, again, I'm not criticizing Crew. Everything we're breaking down is to help him improve his game in any way. And if he takes the information and uses it, great. And if he doesn't find it helpful, you know, so be it. But let's break it down. Lunging a little bit for this one. I'd like to see a little bit more of an explosive move out of Crew's body to this ball. And again, I think he's spending a lot of time working on his fitness, his explosive movement, and he knows he needs it to compete at this level, right? Tennis isn't a game of just ball striking and technique. That's where a lot of American players tend to go wrong. I know Crew's not American. But a lot of Americans really get obsessed with technique and they forget that tennis is a movement and balance game. And those are the two biggest things that really matter at the highest level. Everybody at the highest level hits the ball well. What separates most people at the highest level besides the mental part of tennis is how well can you defend and how well can you move to defend and attack. So that's really important. So a little bit of lunging here. 
And again, we get a short forehand situation off the really good serve. Oliveira a chance to line up and crank the forehand on the inside out. The only mistake Oliveira is making a little bit here, he's way out in the alley. So if he doesn't do an incredible job with this shot and do damage to crew on the next ball, the entire court is open and Oliveira will be running if crew can defend this pretty well, right? So let's look at this. Little slice forehand from Crew right here. We see him lining up to chip it. And he doesn't hit it particularly well, but it doesn't have to be hit that well to get Oliveira running from one side to the other. And Oliveira does a pretty good job there of just kind of, you know, having to back up and run and sprint really quickly to this ball, right? Get up on it really quick, get behind it. And then Carew here is inside the baseline, maybe expecting something a little short, but Oliveira rips the forehand gets decent depth on it not zone three but you know towards the back area of zone two Cruz on the run to this he's having to hit the open stance backhand again which was what we looked at in the first point and he's unable to completely control it the way that he wants to right he's going for depth clearly on that running shot right there but it sails a little bit long. So again, these defensive explosive movement situations is where Kuru really needs to spend a lot of his time. That's the first big area we're looking at. If he improves this area, he's going to do tremendously well and continue to rise up the ranks. I think if he can improve this one particular area, he can definitely get inside the top 200 and definitely put himself in a situation to even go higher than that. The next area I'm going to jump into and look at with Carew's game is overheads. Now, he has cleaned it up since this tournament and these events. He's gotten a lot better on the overhead, but he missed quite a few overheads in some of these challenger matches. We're going to look at his overhead now and break it down. All right, so before we break the first one down, let's let it play once in real time. Christian Langmo serving far side, big serve, big forehand. Crew did a really good job in this match of isolating his backhand, finding it, and then kind of dissecting it. And there's the overhead opportunity right there, right? So let's go back for a second. Langmo far side, Crew on the near side. Big serve down the tee right there. Crew does a good job handling it. Not as deep as he would like, right? This ball landing a little bit shorter. Langmo lining up the forehand. He's got a big forehand. But he ends up hitting short here to Crew's backhand, which you know is a big strength. Crew understood in this match pretty quickly that Langmo couldn't go head to head with him, backhand to backhand, cross to cross. So Crew took a lot of balls there, tried to exploit that side, got Langmo to slice a lot of balls, which was really smart. And then these courts were kind of slow and high bouncing, so Crew could redirect or focus on that backhand on the next shot if he wanted off of those slices. So here, just hits it, right? Goes right back to his backhand. He's like, look, you got a big forehand. Your backhand, definitely the weaker side. So Langmo goes lob, right? And then Crew goes to line this up. And then the contact's a little bit low on this particular one. And then he has the air there. Now, like I said before, Crew really cleaned up his overheads in the following matches after this and got a lot better with it. But he was struggling with quite a few overheads in the couple of rounds he played in qualies of this particular challenger. Let's jump into the next point now. And here he's playing Oliveira again, right? Let's let this play once in real time before we break it down. Crew serving this time down the tee. Oliveira scoops it back. Big forehand from Crew. Got a little aggressive here in the middle of the second set. Started saying, hey, wind or not. I'm going to go for some shots, right? Now, one of the dangers, too, about being Carew and having his game style is you're playing more aggressive than a lot of guys. You're hitting through the court, at least with the flatness of your shots. Guys are hitting a little bigger and heavier than he is. But when you're hitting through the court like this or trying to, you might get a lot of short balls or opportunities to finish at the net. So you want to make sure your overheads are super solid and your finishing game is strong at the net. So Crew again, pops a serve. Hits a really nice spot here, pretty darn close to the center line this time, right? Maybe within six inches of the center line. Gets Oliveira stretched. Oliveira just gets the two hands on it and then pops that ball pretty deep considering the position. This is an area I'd like to see Crew get a little bit better in on his return game is when he gets stretched on returns, I want to see those returns landing deeper in the court to try to keep guys from attacking as much. Crew punishes that forehand big time, just sits on it loads up the body right semi open or open stance here really loads up thumps it huge shot Oliveira goes over runs is on the complete stretch right here so he's in big trouble big damage from Carew Carew is now inside the court recognizing the damage Oliveira ends up accidentally hitting short here Carew steps around spanks a forehand inside in it's a little bit short but it's effective because Oliveira 
is pretty darn far behind the baseline from the previous shot. So sometimes shorter shots can be effective for attacking when players are really far back behind the baseline because you're going to have to reach for the next shot while they're running to it. So Oliveira does that, ends up hitting a lob right here. It's tough to see him. You lose him out of the screen just a little bit. But he throws up the lob. And the reason Oliver is throwing up the lob is not that he naturally wouldn't do it, but this is a main draw match that Carew's playing, and Oliver has probably looked at the footage of some of Carew's earlier matches where maybe he flubbed a few of those overheads in the first and second round of qualies. So if I'm Oliveira, I'm going to test that overhead, especially when it's windy, and see, hey, you know, it's a day or two later. Are you going to be able to put those away now? Because I saw that you missed some in the first two rounds of qualies against two different opponents. Throws up the lob. Carew goes to hit it. You can see he doesn't look comfortable when he goes up to stretch and hit this here. It's definitely getting behind him. And again, it was windy. But if you're going to attack, you've got to be comfortable with coming in and trying to finish. So this ball got a little bit behind him. He stretched. And then we accidentally missed that overhead right there. And Oliveira collects the point. All right, so let's move ahead to the next point now. And one thing that I've noticed with Carew is he struggled a little bit against heavy topspin balls with depth on them to both his forehand and backhand side. I'd say it happened more consistently in the last couple clay events he's played where the heavy forehand deep to his forehand side has caused damage to his own forehand or caused him to hit short in situations. But we're going to look at some points here from some hard court events leading up to those clay events, right, where heavy balls were able to do damage against his backhand side. So let's take a look. Before we break the first one down, let's let it play once in real time. Crew serving near side against Langmo again. Backhand return deep, heavy, causes a little damage. Forehand deep, heavy to the backhand. These courts were higher bouncing and slower. A court meant a little bit more for a heavy ball. Crew hits through the court a little bit more. But that's one thing about tennis is every single time you go to a tournament, you're going to be playing on different courts with different conditions and different altitudes. And that's why you want to have a really well-rounded game that can be suited to any surface and any playing condition. So again, crew serving here. Let's go ahead and break this down now. This was a second for sure. A little bit of kick wide to the backhand, trying to isolate Langmo's backhand because again, his control over the backhand is not nearly as strong as the forehand side and it leaves him open to attack because he doesn't control the left to right aim of it or the depth as well as he should. But he hits this one pretty deep, but again, middle third of the court. Crew comes from inside the baseline off the serve, has to back up. Doesn't get behind it very comfortably here, right? As comfortable as I'd like to see him. I'd definitely like to see him a little bit more behind this ball comfortably. It's looking uncomfortable there from the shot, little damage. Ends up hitting short, and Crew knows though, hey, if I'm gonna hit short to Langmore, just defend here. I'm going to aim it to the backhand side to try to avoid his forehand, but Langmo wants to step around and spank a forehand, and he does really heavy, really deep and close to the baseline right there, and that ball gets up on crew a little bit. He takes it a little bit early, right, but it's uncomfortable. He can't control it, and it lands super short inside zone one, inside the service line here. Very attackable, obviously, for Langmo now, getting ready to clock a forehand. Let's see what he does. Big forehand inside out. Instead of, again, the, the one-two combo, deep on the first one and heavy. You're back a little bit. Crew did move forward, but you're still back behind the baseline a bit because I'm setting up to attack again, which means, right, Langmo could either go deep or he can go shorter and still punish it big time. He goes a little bit shorter on this one, gets Crew on the stretch. There's the stretch and then finishes right there. So I did notice again in the clay events recently here when Crew met somebody that was at or just a little bit above his level and as well in situations in these hard court events, he was having a lot of trouble with really spinny and heavy balls and he does like to hit through the court a lot and the danger of hitting a little bit flatter is when you don't hit the ball perfectly, your ball is going to sit up versus a ball that's a little heavier with a little more rotation on it. That ball is still a little bit tougher to hit through the court um, compared to one that's a little flatter when we miss and we're a little bit off. Let's look at the next point now. And same as before, before we look at this one, let's let it play once in real time quick. Oliveira serving near side. Crew returning on the far side. Gets pretty deep return there, looked really good. There's a shorter backhand, and then Oliveira punishes the first chance that he gets, right? So again, here, Oliveira, that tricky lefty serve. I hate playing lefties myself, so... Tough to play against, especially that way that ball can curve and or kick. So takes this one wide. And Oliver had pretty good disguise on that. Just by the contact and the way he tossed it up here, this looked like it was going to go down the tee originally just by the way he had kind of 
went up to hit it. And Carew actually guessed this way based on that. I think he read him. But then Oliver ends up pulling this one here. It was tough to read. I didn't read it properly either. So Carew guesses this way on accident or reads this way. Then Oliver surprises with the wide one there, catches Carew off guard a little bit. And Crew does a really good job, though, of just kind of rolling that one heavier and just deeper, blocking it, right? Roll it heavy, deep, get Oliveira on the back foot. Oliveira lifts it. Look at the follow through from Oliveira. Lifts it, heavy spin, and he just says, hey, I'm going to go middle deep and try to take away angles from you. As long as I hit it deep, I'm good. Against most players, you should be okay. And he gets it to Crew's backhand, which, again, is Crew's stronger side, but he forces Crew, you know, off the ground on a two-handed backhand, on this shot. So Crew was on offense on the first shot, but Oliveira neutralized that with a deep, heavy spin ball. Crew accidentally hits short here to the middle third of the court. This is a zone two ball. And now Oliveira goes from being back, right, behind the Acapulco logo here. And now he's moving in and seeing, hey, Crew did not handle that deep, heavy spin ball to the backhand well. And I still think Crew again, has a tougher time handling it on his forehand side than his backhand side. But in this particular situation, we had two backhands we're looking at. But here it is, Oliveira stepping up. So we know he's going to get aggressive moving into the court here a little bit, right? Crew is back on defense. He hits the laser. And this one, he flattens out a little bit. It's got spin on it still, but he flattens it out and hits it relatively close to the line and hits the winner, right? Oliveira knows if I can hit a couple of deep, heavy balls to Carew close to the baseline. It's enough to draw balls that are short where I can move in and then finish and attack. So I'd really like to see Carew handle some of those higher, heavier balls and not end up hitting short inside zones one or two off those shots where the opponent can do damage or hit winners on the next ball. And originally I wasn't going to include the four section, but I am going to include this. It's from a clay tournament a couple weeks ago that he played, but we're going to look at a couple things here with Carew and one in particular, which is his susceptibility to getting wide slice serves hit against him on the deuce side. So Carew struggles a bit with guys that can really hit the wide slice on the deuce side and stretch him there. All right, guys, same as always. Before we break it down, let's watch one here in real time. Man is serving, wide slice, right? And then the deep return from Crew, really good job there. The running forehand, and we get the quick miss. So let's just go back for a second again. This took place just a couple weeks ago. Main is serving near side. A little tricky, because this looks like a kick, right? And he kind of hits a little bit more of a kick position than a slice position with his actual contact here. And it did have a little bit more of a topspin serve to it. But I guess the main point is whether it was topspin serve or a slice serve to this area here is he's able to hit this mark, this area, you know, the forehand side of the deuce box and stretch crew with the serve. And maybe it was a combo of the two spins, but he did a good job of hitting that spot. And you can see Carew when he splits, Carew splits to the other direction. And we saw Carew do that when he was also playing the hard court match right against Oliver, he did the same thing. He split this way instead of going this way. So he's guessing in one direction. Djokovic does that a lot, but Djokovic is so quick to cover court that he's able to do that and still hit a good return. And most people can't get away with that. But Cruz doing it here, right? And he gets caught and he doesn't look balanced or comfortable when he goes over to get this ball. He's really reaching... He doesn't look balanced when he has to move in these explosive situations. What I mean by explosive situations is any situation where you have to move suddenly, right? It's like really quick, jarring, last second. It's unexpected movement. A lot of those unexpected movement situations, he loses his balance. The athleticism doesn't appear to quite be as strong as he needs it to be to hit a good shot. So he needs to continue to improve in those scenarios. And here, he does a really good job, even from a tough position, of finding really good depth on that. And look at how deep that lands, right? what, six inches to a foot, whatever from the baseline. The problem is because the ball has almost no spin on it or force, Maynard only has to back up a little bit before he's able to move back into the shot and hit an aggressive forehand. Again, semi-open stance, loading the body, and really he's going to torque the heck out of this thing, and he should. And he's got crew really far back, so he goes wide angle topspin forehand, big forehand, but he angles it a little more. And then Carew again, going to hit the ball here, does not look comfortable in these athletic positions. I still work with kids and still train juniors now. I've got a couple kids that are pretty serious, and I've been preaching to them for a long, long time about just the importance of athleticism. Tennis is a game about athleticism, movement, balance, 
and athleticism is going to be king in the next five years. It already is now. You have to have extremely high levels of athleticism to really get through the crowd and the field and to really work your way up the rankings inside, let's say, the top 10 in the world, top 20 in the world, even the top 100. The bar of athleticism is getting severely raised and has been going up for the last 10 to 15 years. So we got crew in this stretch position right here, right? He's lost a little bit of balance. Let's see what happens off the shot. And then there's the uh, the uncontrollable air, right? But I need Carew moving forward to really be able to get better balance, better athleticism, continue to work on it, and be able to survive at least four aggressive big shots during a point. Let's go ahead and look at the last point now. All right, let's look at it once in real time before we break this down. Again, big wide serve there. And then we can't control the return. Really high quality serve, but we got to find a way to get these returns back in play. Let's see if Carew cheats on the return and goes to his left like Djokovic does or not. Mana this time again, maybe a little bit more of a true slice toss on this one. Crew splits in place for this one. We can see him actually right there. He does just kind of split in place. He backed up a little bit on it. And when he backed up, Mana hit that corner right here. Stretched him, you know, he's returning the ball from outside the alley, right? Look at the quality of that wide slice serve. It's huge. And then we can't control the return right there. And we missed the shot off a really good serve. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video on four areas Caruso can continue to work on to improve his ATP Tour ranking. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today that you can apply to your own tennis game, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps this channel continue to grow. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see everybody next time.